Today we're debating about which is better, the Sony A7 III or the A7R III, particularly when using crop sensor lenses. This is going to be a review. My name is Shut up! Well, actually the real debate is why I chose to buy an A7R 3 which was released in October 2017 as opposed to just buying another A7 III which was released about four months later which is in February, I think 2018. As far as you know what's important to me, they are pretty much identical cameras. I mean there are subtle differences here and there but the main difference is that the A7R 3 uh, has 42 megapixels, uh, which is twice as much megapixels as the A7 III. Now, in the world of creating content for the internet, uh, you know, this really doesn't make a difference. The fact that you have a higher megapixel count um, doesn't affect anything at all. Um, so you're probably wondering, Lyra, why the hell did you go and buy or spend 50 grand more? Uh, when you could have just bought a second a7 III. As of late, I've, you know, handled a little bit more photo-based projects or photo photography clients, um, more than video clients. So the thing about my photography, uh, even videography in a sense, is that I find the story in the edit. Basically what I mean is, you know, I make sure that I get the basics, which is, you know, amount of light and uh, aperture, shutter speed and ISO. I get all that, you know, dialed in uh, exactly the way I want it. And I literally shoot the hell out of the subject. You know, I try and get every angle possible so that when I go back into the edit, I can create the story there. Now there is seldom where I pre-plan a shoot. Um, mostly it happens in, you know, like if I'm doing like a product photography gig or like a, you know, product video or something like that, that it's very seldom that I pre-plan. If you follow me on my Instagram, which you should, um, you would see that I have shared like a lot of before and after edit. You would know by looking at those that I heavily post produce my images. I can't explain why, but I really enjoy manipulating, you know, images and making things seem like um, they are unnatural or, you know, making or creating scenes where you wouldn't necessarily find it like that in real life. Um, and as I'm editing these images, you know, most of the time I'm editing it while zoomed in uh, to 400% trying to, you know, like uh, crop out a blade of grass or try to crop the hair out or trying to just remove a subject or remove people from the background. So I'm most of the time, you know, editing my images at like 400% uh, scale. And when you're, done, when you're at that scale, you start seeing the pixels and you start seeing, you know, how um, how much detail there is in, in an image. And I started noticing that like when I use my full frame lens, which is, you know, my 85 millimeter, um, when I use that on my a7 III, uh, I tend to get a lot more details um, in my image when I zoom in that much. And when I use like a crop sensor lens, like the 50 millimeter or the, the wide angle lens that I'm using on this on the a6500, I realized that there's not that much detail. And the problem with that is because I manipulate my images a lot, I use a lot of computational tools that live within Photoshop, like, you know, the content aware fill or the lasso tools, or, you know, like the hair removal tools. I tend to use that a lot um, because, you know, it just makes things fast as opposed to just taking the pen tool and, you know, individually or manually uh, going and cutting out uh, hair or like um, subjects from the image. So when I'm working with like uh, a crop sensor lens or the images that are taken from a crop sensor lens, uh, e the computer or Photoshop finds it very difficult to latch on to these um, details because uh, they're not there. When you zoom into 400%, you start realizing that, you know, like the details that you would normally see on a 24 megapixel camera aren't really there. So I, you know, started digging into it and trying to figure out why this was happening. So in theory, um, when you're using a full frame lens on a full frame camera, uh, the image or the sensor lives inside, you know, the lens because the lens is obviously a circular, um, it's a circular object. Um, and the, the lens obviously or the sensor or the image that you're looking at right now lives inside that. So essentially the lens is exposing all the megapixels that are available on that sensor uh, to take the picture. But when you're using a crop sensor or a crop 
uh, or APS-C lens, the lens actually, or the out, the circ, or the or the border of the lens lives inside the image. So there's a lot of megapixels um, on the borders that are not being used, are just you know like hanging hanging out there in the dark. Um, and because of that, when you have a 24 megapixel camera and you you know, you put a, a crop uh, lens on it, you're reducing that to like between 8 and 10 megapixels so that you're like not even using half the capacity of, of half the resolution of your camera this won't matter if you know you're just shooting and posting but i tend to recompose you know crop out like manipulate my images so much that when i'm zooming into 400 percent i start noticing this so let me show you what i mean this is my a7 III and i'm gonna you know connect or i'm gonna attach my 50 millimeter which is which is a, God, I haven't used this lens in such a long time, which is essentially a crop uh, crop lens. Now, when you go on the menu system of Sony's, there is an option for you. What this is showing is that my maximum amount of uh, resolution or the maximum amount of megapixels that are available to me on this lens right now is limited to 10 megapixels. Essentially, what it's saying is that because I'm using this lens, only half the pixels are available available for me to shoot but if i switch this to a full frame lens let me show you now if you take a look at what's available you're gonna see that uh you that i have the full 24 megapixels of this sensor so i'm shooting at maximum you know resolution which means i am going to see the blades of grass or the hair um that I'm trying to crop out when I zoom in at 400%. So what was my alternative? My alternative was to either get a wide angle lens um, that's full frame. Essentially it would have to be a zoom lens because I'll be zooming in and out of telephoto and wide. Um, and Sony glass is so expensive, especially if you want to get something with like a you know high F stuff like the Sigma that I'm using. The Sigma has an F1.4. It was either that or to get a camera that has you know a, a ton more megapixels so that when it gets reduced it would be an acceptable amount of <laughs> pixels that i have uh, or an acceptable amount of resolution that i have to you know like manipulate my images but also at the same time i wanted to get a full frame camera as a, a, a second camera or like a backup camera so the obvious choice was the a7r3 and not the r4 because that's so much more expensive um and it was a little out of my budget obviously because most of these decisions are dictated by the you know amount of money that i have to spend so which is why i went and settled or went and bought a a7r3 now let me show you what happens when you connect a crop sensor lens to an a7r3 at this point you're going to see that the maximum amount of pixels that are available for me to shoot is 18 megapixels now which is a lot closer to 24 as opposed to just using a 10 megapixel um, sensor to take my pictures theoretically that's so that's what i'm talking about but <laughs> But you know, usually when you want to buy or when you want to test your theories out, you try and you know try it on, on a loaner camera, uh, and then see if my, the theory actually works. But obviously, I, I couldn't find a loaner camera, and I you know just trusted my gut. Let's just hop on uh, the laptop and you know take a few example shots and see if I'm actually right or whether I just wasted 50 grand and just could have settled for a 73 You never know. So let's take a look at that. So moment of truth, let me open up the images on Photoshop and then we'll take a look and try and figure out whether my theory or the theory that's prevailing on the internet right now is actually true. Kind of scary. <laughs> Did I waste my money? Well, we'll, we'll find out. So I have two images, identical images that I um, took pictures of using the A7 Three, which is on the left side and on the right hand is a7r3 i've put the settings the settings are identical so what we need to do is uh, start zooming in okay i don't know if you guys can see this 
right off the bat, I mean, it, it's very noticeable that the picture on the right, which is the A7R3, if you take a look at the ribs on the on the, or the coil ribs on the on the string, you can distinctively see that. But whereas, if you take a look at the A7 III, um, there is you know little to no details on on the strings. Now, for somebody who takes the image and doesn't recompose or doesn't manipulate and just you know post it online, the A7 III is going to be you know a perfect fit. You won't have a problem with uh, people noticing. But if you are somebody who, you know, like zooms 600% into an image and tries to, you know, like remove hair or, you know, try to manipulate the image in such a way where you're removing things or adding things, you're going to start noticing that, you know, like you need uh, these pixels to improve your workflow. Because, for example, if I were to use uh, like a quick selection tool, the SNR3 image is going to need a lot, you know, less computational processing power than the A7 um, 3 because you know it has a lot to you know work off of because you know Photoshop and all these um, softwares are, are pixel based you know they uh, they analyze the pixels and you know uh, and they are and they are they have like an intelligence processing thing that you know this is me talking about shit that I have no idea of this will help you increase your or speed up your workflow uh, because you can use you know tools like that like content uh, the id or you know the lasso tool and all of that um, to just speed up your workflow so in summary or just to wrap things up if you are somebody who takes images um, and just posts them with very light to minimal editing or manipulation then you wouldn't notice a difference uh, at by shooting at 10 megapixels with an a7 III on a crop, crop lens. But if you are somebody who manipulates images a lot and you know like zooms in and uh, literally uses a lot of um, Photoshop's tools to automatically uh, do things for you as opposed to manually doing it, you're definitely going to notice that you have only 10 megapixels and the details aren't quite there. I don't think there's gonna be uh, any effect on video shooting with the S7 R3. Uh, but that is you know yet to be uh, decided i have to do a lot more testing on that because that obviously requires uh, a little bit more testing so yeah that's what it is in a nutshell i hope uh, you guys can you know make a decision between getting an a7 III or an a7 r3 um, which are almost you know are pretty close in price range i mean i guess that's it so yeah.